Hi, groovy guys, groovy gals. Um, this is the first time I've done anything like this, so uh, be gentle with me. Um, uh, this is my old 27-inch uh, uh, iMac from about 2011, uh, which I dearly loved. You know, huge screen, you can put a lot of stuff on it. It's like, you know, watching with YouTube TV or streaming, you can use it as a TV and watch anything you want. The only problem is that it died. Uh, and I did some research, and basically the, uh, the startup button, which is behind the case over here, uh, tends to screw up. There's a little washer that tends to get between the, the outside button and the actual switch that's inside the case, and then you can't turn on the computer, which turns it into a big, dumb piece of sculpture. Um, and if you want to fix it uh, properly, you know, if you want to fix it according to Hoyle, you know, according to Apple, you need to buy an entire new case, which is worth way more than the computer itself is. It's a, you know, it's a 2011 computer. So, uh, so I researched, you know, what's going on there, you know, found, found that the, the problem is this silly little washer, you know, this two-cent washer that wiggles out of place, and then you can't push, physically push the, uh, the outer button in to touch the switch. Uh, in order to fix it, you have to take off, you know, officially, if you wanted to go in and, and uh, go into the computer and, and track down the switch and, take, and move the little washer around, you have to take off the front glass, then the LCD screen, you know, the entire screen of the computer. You have to do that, you have to detach about 14 different cables, any, would, any one of which you can break or get wrong. Then you have to start taking crap apart. You have to pull off a speaker cover, you have to pull off all kinds of stuff. You even have to move, take off the logic board in order to get to the switch. So I wasn't gonna do that. Um, so I hacked, hacked a way to actually hack uh, at the back of the uh, computer um, to pull out the uh, the offending button to get to the actual switch, uh, and it worked. So I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so here's the uh, the tool I used to do this. Uh, it's it's a you know made, most people call this a Dremel Moto tool. This is actually one from Harbor Freight, probably about twenty bucks. Um, you know most uh, Mickey Mousers like me uh, probably already have one. And I using a uh, uh, an abrasive wheel, you know, a thin abrasive wheel that just uh, screws onto the mandrel. And you can cut through aluminum, you can cut through steel with that if, you're, if you, take, uh, you take your time. Um, this is, the process is gonna make you know, aluminum dust and it's gonna make, uh, you know, and the, du the wheel kind of wears away as you grind. Um, so you're gonna wind up, you're gonna wind up with some dust around, you know, what I do is I put a rag around the, around the edge because you don't want aluminum dust, you know, floating in, into the hole into your computer. So, I just kept wiping the dust up as I as it made dust. It made a fair amount of fine dust, um, but I cleaned it up. So here's what I did. Here's the this is the the piece of case that I cut out. This is the button that goes in there, and this is the piece. Basically, this assembly was the thing that was making my computer useless. So what I did was I just uh, you know I made it about an inch. You know I had a I did a little research on the on the internet about this problem, and. Uh, it, so I, I knew where the switch was, and I also knew that you don't want to cut uh, cut through this area here, because that's where the wire that goes to the switch is taped to the back of the uh, case. So if you cut the wire, then you're going to wind up having to cut the case, fish out the wire, and get yourself a new switch, um, which I didn't want to do. So I just cut along there, cut along there, and then cut along, you know, this this edge here. And um, one kind of cool thing is that when you cut aluminum, it doesn't make any sparks. Uh, when, but when you certain, the minute you touch steel, and this piece here that is actually the backing for the actual switch, which is that little white button, um, you, as you cut through the aluminum, uh, you know, as you, find, as you start to get you know, sparks, you'll know that you're hitting this steel backing plate. And you know, you don't want to cut into it, you just want to cut the, you know, you, it doesn't matter if you hit the steel a little bit as you cut on these three sides. So I cut all the way through that, that, and that. And then when I cut this line, I was just did it very carefully. And um, just because I didn't want to cut that wire. Um, so I cut it through maybe so I got my first spark, you know, cut it through to, you know, so I knew I was pretty much through the aluminum. And then I just took, took the piece, which was, you know, cut loose on three and a half sides, just wiggled it and wiggled it and wiggled it, you know, for a minute 
until the aluminum finally broke without cutting off this steel piece that holds the switch in place. So, and obviously you want to do this, you know, before you even start doing this, you want to make sure the computer's unplugged. This switch has um, doesn't have any volt, severe amount of current going through it. Um, so I don't, it's, you know, don't sue me, you know, I'm just a hacker, you know, you know showing what I did. Um, but I think it's, I think it's safe to, you know, touch that, that, that button. I mean, it's, you know, it's basically attached to, you know, the outside of the case anyway, um, you know, when the computer's functioning normally. So, uh, to my surprise, I, uh, you know, when I picked the computer back up and pushed the button, it booted right up. That was the problem. Um, so it cost me, uh, a, a one abrasive wheel in about five minutes. You know, I spent about 10 times more time uh, doing the video than I did actually doing the job. So, as promised, uh, my, uh, my, my, my new uh, old 27-inch iMac uh, is uh, going 100% now. Um, so if you have the same problem, if, you, uh, if your start button, does, start button doesn't seem to want to uh, start, um, you know, if it stops clicking, essentially, that pretty much means that that washer has moved to, you know, has wiggled around, so now the, the, the button isn't working, but underneath it, the switch probably is. Bye-bye.